Hi, in this video we'll learn how to add or subtract mixed fractions with unlike denominators. So the first thing we need to do here is convert these mixed fractions into improper fractions. So to do that, I will have to multiply my whole number with the fractions denominator first. So 2 times 7, forget about the negative sign for a moment. Let's just focus on converting this mixed fraction into a fraction. So 2 times 7 is going to give me 14. And then whatever you get, you add that to the numerator. So 14 plus 1 is going to give me 15. So I will get 15 here. And then we don't change the denominator, so that's going to be 7. But remember that we ignored this negative sign, so we have to put this negative sign in front of our fraction. Let's just put this inside the parentheses. Then we have the plus sign here. Okay, then parentheses. Now we're going to convert this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So forget about the negative sign for a moment and let's just put the negative sign in front of our fraction first. 3 times 2 gives me 6 and then 6 plus 1 gives me 7. And the denominator will still remain 2. So remember that you multiply the whole part with the fraction's denominator and then whatever you get, you add that to the numerator. Now we're done converting these mixed fractions into improper fractions. Now we're going to take care of the parentheses. So this one is negative 15 over 7. We can remove the parentheses. And here, if I remove the parentheses, then I'll have two signs next to each other. And what we need to do is we need to think positive times negative. Remember that positive times negative is negative, right? So if I remove the parentheses, I will have to put the negative sign and then we have 7 halves. Now, you see that I have different denominators. I cannot add or subtract these fractions unless I have the common denominator. So to find the common denominator, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply these two denominators. 7 times 2 gives me 14. So now I know that the least common denominator will be equal to 14. So now I know that my new denominator is going to be 14. Now there is another way to find the least common multiple. Like I multiplied 7 and 2 and said 14. This strategy will work in this particular case. But this will not work in all the cases. If you want to find the least common multiple, if you want to find an easy method which is going to work for all your problems, it is, what you have to do is, you just have to list down the multiples of your denominator. So the multiple of 7 are 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and so on. All you need to do is you need to look for the smallest number which is common in both of them. Because we're looking for the least common multiple, the number which is smallest and common in both of them. So the smallest number which is common in both of them is 14. So that's that's how I know that the least common multiple is going to be 14. So this is also an option of multiplying the denominators, but this is not always going to work. You can still go with this option by just multiplying the denominators, but then at the end, you will have to reduce the fractions because you're going to end up with bigger numbers if you don't get the least common multiple, and then you will have to reduce the fractions at the end. So that is still an option, but I would recommend going this way because this method of finding the least common multiple will always work. Now here, what I need to do is, I need to think, how do I get from 7 to 14? My new fraction's denominator is 14, but this is 7, right? How do I get from 7 to 14? So what I'll do is, I'll write here negative 15 over 7, so what do I multiply in 7 to make it equal to 14? Well, I can multiply this by 2 because 7 times 2 gives me 14. Now if I'm multiplying my denominator by 2, I will also have to multiply my numerator by 2. Because I want to keep my fraction balanced, I cannot be unfair by just multiplying my denominator by 2 and leaving the numerator. Because look at, look at this. I multiplied the top by 2, I multiplied the bottom by 2, so that means I just, I'm just multiplying by 2 over 2. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So if you multiply any fraction by 1, you're not changing the value of that fraction, right? 
So that's what I did. Now, negative 15 times 2 is going to be negative 30. So now I have generated the equal in fractions. Negative 15 over 7 is equal to negative 30 over 14. That means I can replace negative 15 over 7 with negative 30 over 40. So in place of negative 15 over 7, I'm going to substitute, I'm going to put negative 30 over 14 because these two are equal fractions, right? They're equal in fractions. The same thing I have to do with this fraction. I have 7 halves and I want my new denominator to be 14. How do I get from 2 to 14? Well, I can multiply my denominator by 7. Now, if I'm multiplying my denominator by 7, I will also have to multiply my numerator by 7. So 7 times 7 is going to give me 49. And then you see that these two fractions are equal to each other. So I can replace 7 half with 49 over 40. So in place of 7 half, I will put 49 over 40. And now you see that I have common denominators, so I can go ahead and add or subtract the fractions. Now here, you have to keep that in mind that this is negative 30 minus 49 over 50. So let's do this first. I have the common denominator of 14, right? So we never add or subtract the denominator, so we're going to leave that as it is. In the numerator, I have negative 30, take away 49. So I'm going to put it here, negative 30, take away 49. Now negative 30, take away 49 is equal to negative 79. And then we never change the denominator, so that's going to stay 14. Now, negative 79 over 14, this is an improper fraction. We cannot leave our final answer in this form, so we'll have to convert this into a mixed fraction. So, I'm going to divide 79 by 14. Forget about the uh, negative sign for a bit. Let's just divide this to convert this into a mixed fraction. So, 14 will go into 79 five times. 14 times 5 is going to be 70. And then 9 is your remainder. Now let's write this in the form of mixed fraction. So when I write this, I have to make sure that quotient becomes my whole number, right? That is my whole number. And the remainder becomes my fraction's numerator and the divisor becomes my fraction's denominator. And then remember, I ignore the negative sign. I have to put that negative sign in front of my fraction, in front of my mixed fraction. So this will be our final answer, negative five and nine over 14. That's all in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel and want to see more videos on other math topics, be sure to subscribe down below and share it with your friends. See you in next video.